Hello folks, thanks very much for tuning in. Um, today's River Patterns, a little fly for the March Browns. So without further ado, let's get into it. In the vise is a Hanak H130 barbless hook at size 12, although I do tie this fly in size 10s and 14s as well. First thing I'm going to do is put a little dot of super glue on the shank of the hook as the thread I'm going to be using today is the Fish On Ultimate Tine Silk and it's a steel grey colour but that's by the by because I'm going to change the colour with a marker pen when the time comes. So I've just started on in behind the eye and I'm just spreading that super glue with my thread all the way up the shank. I'm going to stop just shy of where the barb of a hook would be to remove my waist and then I'm going to have a couple of turns just to cover up the rat's tail. Okay, the tail of this fly then is um, Coq de Leon feather. I'll just show you that here and as you can see it's a, a browny black speckled feather and I'm going to take approximately six or seven strips from the stock and I'm going to show it up to the hook and I want it to protrude about a centimeter past the bend of the hook for this flight so I'll just catch that in with a couple of turns and if it's a little bit too long I can ease it back and once I'm happy it's in the right position, I can lash down the rest. I'm going to just remove some of this excess at the front uh, because I don't need it. And then tidy it up with a few turns. I'm building a very, very slight taper with a thread. Probably you won't be able to see it uh, with the camera, but it's there and I'm going to stop at the base of the body of the fly. So next then I'm going to be using some strip, stripped quills, I'm using the Polish quills here and uh, they're, they're lovely and defined these and you can use them straight out of the packet. So I've got, got one of them out of the packet here, I just want to remove this little bit of waste at the end and then catch in about, I'm catching in about an eighth of an inch and I'm doing it on my side so you probably won't be able to see it but I've caught in about an eighth of an inch and I've brought my thread all the way up to the top now I've made quite a smooth body for this to go down on and I'm going to come in with my hackle pliers and catch that end in now take, you've got to do this with quite a bit of care, um, quite fragile stuff to work with, stripped herald, and you've obviously got that pointy hook which if you catch it will rip into the herald and it will make it much more difficult for you to um, wind up the, the herald, if there's a little nick in it any kind of weakness and it just splits away from you. So just take your time, bring it all the way up. Lovely, you can see the banding in it there. Um, it's just really nice. Hero, some of the stuff you, you, you know, you order a lot of gear online nowadays and uh, when you get it back, you're often disappointed because the you know, you don't get this kind of definition on a lot of heralds. So one of my favourites, the old Polish, the Polish quills. So I've got that round and I've secured it in place with my tine silk. Now to protect that herald, I'm going to use some Perdigon resin. It's really super thin, uh, even thinner than the Solaris. So as this is a dry fly, I don't want to add any additional weight. So, 
that's why I'm using this rather than my usual Solaris and stuff. But just get that on. Just make sure you work it round the fly. Sorry, the the body of the fly. And once you're happy that you've secured it all, you can come in with your torch. I'm just going to open my vise up and turn it slightly so that some of that resin runs around the shank and then I can cure it. Okay. So that's looking not too bad. The tail's splayed out nice for me. But if, um, if you're tying these and you find that your tail's not splayed out, then a little loop in behind the bend of the hook and brought tightly up will soon cure that for you and that will splay it out. But I'm fairly happy with the way it's sitting. Okay, next I'm going to add my wing and what I'm using today is the uh, CDC Ultra Select and it's tan. This is from Troutline. And I've already selected three plumes out the packet. Yeah, I'm using three. Uh, I've had some comments about my dry flies actually being over, overly dressed, so uh, I make no apologies for that. That's how I like them. Uh, I want them to stay afloat even in, even in quick water. And I'm just taking my time now to, to make sure the tips are aligned. I want all the tips in line. So I've done that, and what I want to do now is I don't want my CDC coming much more than an eighth of an inch past the bend of the hook. So that looks all right where it is. So I'm going to transfer over to my other hand and then cut away my, my excess. I don't know if I managed to get that bit on camera, but hopefully it was there. Then before I tie that on, I'm going to add a little bit of wax to help give me some purchase. Then with a, a nice pinching loop, I'm going to catch it in. Now, what's happening here is it's trying to roll around the shank and I really don't want that. So I'm just going to bring it back off and show it up to the hook again. And I think that's better this time. Now, once I've got it in place, I'm going to cock the CDC forward. Sorry, my fingers are in the way here. And bring my thread around the back of the CDC. Okay, so my thread is now sitting in at the back here. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of dubbing, and what I'm using is Nature Spirits Hair Mask Dubbing. This is golden brown, and I've already taken a little bit out of the packet. It's got um, some fine glitzy material in it, so it gives the fly, which is quite a subdued fly really, just a little bit of sparkle to it. You don't need much of this dubbing, and it doesn't need to be hard dubbed on with your fingers. So now, Grab your, grab your wing, pull it all back out the way, and you want to get, I like to get two or three turns in behind here. And what this does is it cocks the wing up slightly. Now I've probably got too much dubbing on, so I'm just going to remove a little bit, because now I'm going to come under, under the wing, and over the front till I'm out of dubbing, like so. Just get rid of that erroneous strand. I'm going to bring it all to the front now. And let's have a look at what we've got. Yeah, it's looking not too bad. And normally I would use brown for this fly. Uh, to finish off, but I've only got green. I've lost my brown pen. I don't know where it's gone. I need to have a 
sort out later and try and find it. But the green works just as well. Uh, I dare say black would be fine too. But I've coloured up my thread now with the, the green pen and I'm going to add a little bit of resin to my thread. To finish off, slick everything back out the way and then just build, build your head. Then with a whip finish tool if you've got one, you can whip finish. I am um, using the old half hitch method and once that's done you can then cure your head. No need to varnish now because you've buried, buried your thread inside the head and you've cured off the UV resin that you had on. I'm just going to remove that little bit. Now, once you're finished, come in with your little dubbing, dubbing brush and just ever so gently tease out some of that dubbing. Doesn't need to be a lot, just a little bit. Now, if I show you it side on there, hopefully you can see that. That's the profile the fish are going to see, which is ideal for March Brown. And there we go. I hope you got some use out of that, folks. If you've not subscribed to the channel already, please remember to do so. And I'll see you all next time.